Hello and welcome to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. It gives me great pleasure to introduce down the line John Ede back on the show. Uh, John Ede is the president of Argus Research and uh, really has his ear to the ground on the other side of the pond in the US. So uh, good morning or good afternoon to you, John. Thank you very much for joining us here on Core Finance again. Thanks for having me, Matt. Glad to be back. Fantastic. Well, let's start off. Uh, this market is hot, and certainly in the U.S., with the Dow breaking new highs, we're above 23,000. Who knew? Um, Warren Buffett saying maybe in a few years' time it could even be at a million. I doubt he'll be around, and you know, fingers crossed, will still be around. But what can investors do in in such a hot market, and and should they still be buying? Well, we we think they should, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a, a seasonal standpoint, the fourth quarter is always the best performing quarter here in, in the U.S. Uh, everybody's heard of sell in May and go away. Well, they come back in October, November and December. And then, um, you know, I think a lot of the, the bears who'd been out of the market, uh, the professional managers have to get back in to try to get some performance before year end. So. I, I think just on a seasonal basis, we're in good shape here. And then the fundamentals are strong, too. In a, a good earnings season, the economy's growing, interest rates are still low. So, so stocks are still a good opportunity. Fantastic. And uh, speaking of particular stocks and earnings seasons, two uh, big U.S. bellwethers, uh, GE and Honeywell, reporting. W what do you make of these numbers? Well, they're, they're going in different directions, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, Honeywell is it, it's just full speed ahead. Uh, the company is, is hitting on all cylinders. It's, it's very profitable. It, it's growing its dividend aggressively. And now the management team is putting together a restructuring plan to spin off a couple of subsidiaries, slim down, and I'm sure they're going to be back out buying other companies and continuing a growth plan. Very well managed company. Uh, we've had it on the buy list a long time, and uh, you know, like the HON shares here. GE is a little different as far as the performance is concerned. It's underperformed for five years now, and the it, it, stock is down 25% this year, and that's a real aberration because the overall U.S. market is up about 15%. So GE is a real outlier, going through a lot of transitions. New management team has come on, very disappointing earnings today, uh, but probably a better value than Honeywell, I would say, Matt. They've got a higher dividend yield. Even if they trim the dividend a little bit, it'll still be a good yield and uh, you know, much cheaper on valuation as everybody's so down on the GE shares. Understood. And, and looking at... Uh the macro environment in the U.S. we had in the last non-farm payroll print, uh, well, look, weaker than expected, albeit the market was uh, expecting a weak number, obviously, after the hurricane season. Uh, we're looking ahead in a couple of weeks now, or a week now, uh, for the next farm non-farm payroll print. And uh, do we expect a, a stronger number, uh, maybe even stronger than expected? Well, I, I think at this stage of the U.S. economic cycle, you're, you're really expecting around 150 or maybe 175,000 jobs a month. All mm -hmm. right. We've got very low unemployment. We're eight years into an expansion. So we're not going to have regularly, you know, the 200,000 plus jobs. But we might get that this month. Um, that's because FedEx and UPS are hiring ahead of the big fourth quarter delivery season. The retailers are hiring. And then all the, the restaurants and eating places, which cut back so much after the hurricanes, are, are going to be hiring again, too. I think we'll see a number above 200 um, for November, Fantastic. for October. Good stuff. And uh, looking at uh, the Treasury yields and the 10-year, we've seen an uplift of late. The dollar seems to be, for the time being, back in favor and obviously a lot of talk about who is going to be the next chair of the Fed. Um, are you taking the, this push higher in the yields as a positive? Uh, we, we are. Um, you know, the, the yield had fallen down close to 2% mm -hmm. in, in September 
And, and that's signaling uh, an economy that just isn't that weak. So uh, it's good to see the yields reflated a little bit, not too much, um, but 2.35, 2.4% is, is okay. And I would expect to see them drift toward 3%, you know, by the end of 2018, just drifting gradually higher. Understood. And, and rate hikes, I mean, it feels like the Fed, it, it's pretty much nailed on talk of 85%, 90% chance uh, of a hike at the next meet. And uh, I can't really see that changing too much uh, ahead. Unless you know, um, unless, unless there were another negative payrolls report, yeah, which yeah. I, I just don't think we're going to get. So one more this year and then probably two more in 2018. And then... Uh, you know, there may be a new head of the Federal Reserve by then and thinking differently. We'll see. <laughs> Indeed. But, I mean, overall, uh, the general feeling is, is actually now the U.S. fills in, in fairly good health. Uh, I think towards the middle of the year, maybe not so. But is that, is that the feeling from the investment community now? Sure. And, and you know, there, there are problems. There's still a high chronic underemployment rate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the potential that we'll lose some of the benefit from trade programs that have been put into place in, in recent years. Um, but overall, again, with rates still relatively low and the economy growing two and a half, three percent, it, it's a pretty good environment for equity investing. Understood. And uh, just to, to finish off, uh, yesterday was the anniversary of uh, 30 years uh, since Black Monday and a, and a big sell-off in the market. Um, here we are. Uh, there are some parallels being drawn with the state of the markets now as, as they were 30 years ago, albeit a lot has changed. Do, do you think uh, it's just coincidental that it's a 30-year anniversary and really we shouldn't be looking too much into um, the, the crash and, and where we are in the market at the moment? Well, certainly the, the closest parallel is, you know, the, the, the highs in stocks. Mm -hmm. We're at all-time highs in the stock market here, and, you know, we were near that back in uh, 2007. But I would say the fundamentals are different. Inflation is a lot lower, interest rates are a lot lower, and the economy is strong and, and earnings are growing and at all-time highs too. So, you know, if we were to jump another 10% in this fourth quarter, uh, without any real earnings growth, then we might be near bubble territory, but but we're not we're not there yet. I'm not I'm not really that worried. Good stuff. So we can all sleep sleep safe at night in the meantime. Uh, yeah. On that note, John, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and we look forward to catching up with you very very soon. Thanks, Matt. Have a great day. Great weekend.